Uh, the other thing is about the imam. Now, if I want a, a wali, you know, and I want to choose a wali, that wali should be a man who is an elderly. It doesn't have to be a, the imam, but it, it can be a man who is an elderly that is known in the community to have a good reputation, you know, and this brother is known also to be a counselor as well. Now, here's the thing is a lot of sisters that they come out from broken relationships that they are broken inside and they need someone to listen to them so they go to the imam and they start pouring their hearts to that imam telling them about all their stories about how their ex-husband was an abusive about her struggle with her with her children about her financial situation all these things so what will happen is this brother who is an imam he's a human right now, very few imams that you will see, and I'm telling you, very few imams that you will see that they are professional. But many of them that they are humans, what they do is they start empathizing with that sister. So they try to help her. Now here as sisters, like if, if one sister, she comes and she starts complaining to me and telling me, now as a sister, you know, I understand that she just wants someone to listen to her. It's not necessarily that she needs a solution, but she needs someone to just like give, you know, to sympathize and empathize with her and like confirm with what she's feeling or and all these things, right? Now, brothers think differently. They're, they're, wires, they're, they're wired differently. They're programmed differently. The first thing they will do is, how can I fix it? That's the first thing they will, you know, they will think about. So the imam or the wali, what will do is they will try to find some help for her. After a while, they can't find that help. They see the sister is still struggling and things like that. So how am I going to fix it? I think I'm the perfect one for her. I will show her the real Islam. I will show her the real how Muslims should treat each other and so on. Subhanallah. And I've seen it over and over and over again, where the sister will go and trust that imam. She will pour her heart for him and tell him or tell him all her uh, life story. And the next thing we'll do is this brother will come and propose her as a second or third wife. Now, you know, as a second or third wife, there is nothing wrong with that. But to tell you honestly, as an imam with a wife, and his first wife is not approving into that. And, the, and he has a whole community to take care of that. You know, subhanAllah, he has to take the measures and the considerations. I'm not saying that it is haram, but he has to take those measure, measures and considerations. And, you know, I, I have a very professional counsel. My psychiatrist actually told me this. I, I go sometimes to a psychiatrist. You know, it's really good that you go to a professional counselor instead of going to an imam, because most of the imams are not professional counselors. Yeah, some of them, they are trained to do that. But I tell you what, as a counselor, they should have that file in front of them, you know, talking to the sister or brother and so on. You know, but once that sister leaves, they have to close that file, put it on the side and not to think about it. But what the happened because they are, they are humans and they are good Muslims, they try to empathize, they try to fix it, they try to solve it. And so they, they kind of like emotionally lean to it. And so once they lean to it, the next thing is like, I fell in love with her or I want to, to make her feel better. And so I want to marry her, you know? And in your mind, it's like, okay, I did not plan for that. I did not sign up for that. This is not what I really wanted, you know? But it happens most of the time. So what, how to deal with an imam? Now, if you want a wali, which is great that everyone should have a wali, it's better to not to tell all your life stories to him. You just tell him, brother, I am divorced. I have such and such children. This is my financial situation you know, and these are the requirement of the brother that I want. For example, I want the brother to have good khuluq, uh, good uh, manners. I want him to be working. I want him to be able to provide. I want him to do this, that. You see what I'm saying? Write a list of the things that you wanted, give it to that imam, and this is what I want. But to try to to try to make him like empathize with you and talk to you and, you know, going back and forth with him and things like that. Sister, he's a brother. He's a male. He's a different. He's a, he's the opposite gender, you know, and he's not an angel. He has feelings too. Think about it from his own perspective too. 
So be professional when you talk to a wali, you know, and don't, don't, you know, don't try to manipulate it like that. You know, I'm telling you, and I'm not blaming you as, as a sister, because I mean, seriously, a lot of sisters are broken and they really need that emotional help. Go to a professional help, please go. And I'm here for you, sister. I'm not professional, but I'm here as a listening here. Sister Martha is here for you. You know, we have Sister Shazia from uh, Plano. She came the other day and she gave you those, uh, you know, the, the center that they have, the counseling center that they have. We have also Khalil Center. They have, uh, they do it online also. They do professional Islamic, you know. Try to find those Islamic counseling, you know. Mashallah, we have some counseling also, Islamic, like Khalil Center and so on, who can help you. They can listen to you, subhanAllah. So uh, that, that's what I advise you, sister. And the brother, inshallah, he will find you the right brother, you know, but try to be as professional as possible. Even when you are with an imam talking about your life story and things like that, be with somebody else. Don't be by yourself. You know, be with your son, be with your another sister you trust, things like that. Don't be by yourself. And that's my advice to you.